Hello friends, welcome to Brain Amplifier and in this video we'll be discussing about the synchronous machine and our consideration will be alternator and believe it will not be a conventional alternator video here we'll be discussing the generation of active power, the generation of reactive power practical considerations, uh, how the alternator remains at a constant speed whether it is running at 100 megawatt load or 500 megawatt load in a power station so to start with uh, I suggest you watch the four videos on if you're not clear with the basics you should watch the, the four videos on brain amplifier one is the synchronous speed second is the rotating magnetic field third is rotor winding and four is stator winding those will give you insight so to start with the synchronous speed is the speed of rotation of the rotating magnetic field in the stator winding this we have discussed in stretch in a separate video so I suggest you watch that first okay and you all must be aware that uh, familiar with this formula that ns equals to 120 f by p before we'll jump to our uh, main topic the alternator we'll briefly be uh, discussing the synchronous machine have patience okay so the synchronous machines uh, rotors are, are of two types i'll be dealing with this part very fastly one is salient pole the other is a cylindrical pole type in salient pole we have concentrated winding here i have distributed winding so here the air gap will not be constant throughout this air gap here the air gap will be constant other thing is here you have to use more number of poles because at smaller lesser number of poles uh, there will be high mechanical forces due to centrifugal action and due to that there may be mechanical distortion in the uh, rotor here this is not a problem so you if you increase the number of poles obviously your synchronous speed will reduce by this formula so these are used generally at lesser speeds maybe in hydro turbines but this you can use at higher speeds also in steam turbines you use this now before we jump further i want you to understand three laws before you read any electrical machines the number one the faraday's, faraday's law that is e equals to d5 by dt what does that mean is suppose i have put a, a cylindrical coil conducting coil in a magnetic field okay now if somehow i can change the magnetic flux with respect to time an emf will be induced in this coil okay so you can change magnetic flux in many ways flux equals to b dot a so either you change the b or you change the a uh, you may have a relative motion between this uh, coil and this magnetic flux either you rotate the coil or you rotate the magnetic flux anyhow you will be inducing uh, you will be changing the magnetic flux and if you will change the magnetic flux an emf will be induced now second point is if somehow you close the circuit either you connect the load then and current uh, some current will be flowing in this circuit if you will close the circuit the current will flow in the circuit if the circuit is open only emf will be induced now third thing is if there is a current carrying loop current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field not necessarily changing magnetic field if you put a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field the force will be produced on that current carrying conductor that is Lorentz force that will be given by f equals to q into v cross b or i into l cross b so if you want to the direction of this Lorentz force either you can you just uh, you if you are familiar with the cross products you put your fingers in the direction of l and curl them in the direction of B and the thumb will be showing you the direction of F okay okay now next thing you must be aware of is rotating magnetic fields and I have discussed it also in a separate lecture so I suggest you watch that now we are jumping to our main topic that is cylindrical rotor synchronous machine an alternator in a power station so you are seeing here very rough 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 sketch so first we'll try to understand what I have made here <laughs> this is my rotor okay this is my stator these are my rotor windings dot here cross here and these are my stator windings i call it them armature windings in a alternator synchronous alternator i put my field winding on the rotor not on the stator while i put uh, armature winding on the stator because the, these carry high current so it is better to put them on a stator static part not on the rotating part so I hope you have watched the video on rotor and stator winding so you must be aware of how these windings are practically done so in this rotor I have put field winding and the direction of current is dot coming out from here and going in in the up this side so this is nothing but simply working as an inductor okay so suppose this is my inductor current coming out from here and going in here coming out from here going in here coming out from here and going in from here okay 
so if this is the direction of current then the direction of maximum magnetic flux will be if i curl my finger in the direction of current then my thumb will be showing me the direction of maximum magnetic flux the flux will be the field lines will be coming out from here and will be going in from here coming out from here going in here and n pole will be produced here and s pole will be produced here that basics you must be aware of how these thing work and the direction of maximum magnetic field lines will be in this direction that is the direction of my maximum magnetic flux or if you do not consider hysteresis losses the mmf direction will also be same so we see that in the field winding also have this inductor coil so that direction if uh, the direction of current is such that okay then the direction of maximum magnetic flux or mmf i call it field mmf will be this towards the direction of this point pen tip this will be the direction of my field mmf okay so far so good the n pole is produced here and s pole is produced here okay now in the stator i have three windings r winding r phase this is y phase this is my blue phase these are 120 degree apart mechanically okay now electric ang angle is 120 mechanical may differ okay so i i want you to understand one thing first that emf induced in a coil is maximum when its coil sides are lying in the maximum flux density position what does that mean i said emf induced in a coil the coil here rep represents the stator windings emf induced in these coils will be maximum when these coils are placed in the maximum flux density position okay so at this moment of time my coils a a dash are placed in the maximum flux density position the field flux density position okay if i rotate my rotor in the anti clockwise direction further 60 degrees then my these windings b dash and b will be in the direction of maximum flux density position though so at, at that time maximum emf will be induced in these windings if i rotate it further 60 degree then maximum emf will be induced in c c dash so at this moment of time i have maximum induced emf in a a dash okay Now one more thing the vectorial direction of this induced emf will be lagging by 90 degree to the flux which is inducing it that is field flux is inducing it so this emf will lag by 90 degree to the field flux not the armature flux okay how as my rotor is rotating so it will produce a sinusoidally varying uh, flux for the stator windings okay so if my suppose my flux is phi cos to phi maximum sin omega t okay then emf induced will be e equals to d phi by dt we know that then if you will calculate e comes out to be e maximum sin omega t minus phi by 2 that is if the phase of my flux is omega t the phase of e equals to omega t minus phi by 2 that is the emf induced is lagging by 90 degree to the flux which is producing it that is field flux not the armature flux do not get confused we have two mmf or two fluxes here that is armature flux and field flux okay and the magnitude of this induced emf will be root 2 pi f nph kw phi f it is winding factor okay okay now we will try to understand the direction of current in the stator winding which is the very important part how the what will be the direction of current induced current in this winding if i connect load of this arm on this armature okay suppose i have connected this armature to the grid then in current will be flowing in it so suppose i am rotating this rotor in the anti clockwise direction how i rotate the rotor in a power station by connecting it to a turbine so suppose this is my rotor okay this is my generator rotor i have connected it with a turbine and at the inlet of turbine i put some steam how i put some steam i have governing walls you assume them by like simple walls okay if i open up the walls more more steam will be in, uh, will be injected in the turbine and it will create more torque okay more more torque means more uh, more power will be transferred to the rotor okay if i uh, close the uh, governing walls less steam will be flowing to the turbine and less torque will be produced so i am rotating this uh, uh, rotor in the anti clockwise direction by the turbine and by the steam okay i am rotating it in anti clockwise direction 
so we know the lenz's law what lenz's law say the direction of current can be sh shown by the lenz's law lenz's law say that uh, direction of induced current will be such that it will oppose the flux which is producing it okay so i was having the armature mmf sorry uh, field mmf so my field mmf is rotating in the anti clockwise direction okay uh, as i my rotor is rotating in the anti clockwise direction so you can assume it like my field mmf is increasing in the anti clockwise direction at this moment initially it was zero as it was approaching it it cuts some parts of these winding so it increases increases increase sinusoidally it is increasing field mmf in this direction so it is increasing 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 in the anti clockwise direction okay so the current will be induced such that it will try to stop the rotation of this rotor in the anti clockwise direction it will try to stop the increment of this field mmf in the anti clockwise direction suppose the current induces in the dot fashion here and cross fashion here that is current coming out from here and going in from here i hope you have watched the state of winding lecture uh, so you can assume how these windings are practically done okay so if the current is coming out from here and going in here then i if i call my fingers in the direction of current my thumb will be showing me the direction of armature mmf or armature flux armature magnetic field lines okay so if current is coming out from here going in from here and direction of armature mmf will be in this direction and this will be the called the phase a axis okay this is my phase a axis this is my direction of armature mmf now i have a field mmf and now i have a armature mmf and the resultant will be fr that is somewhat in this direction somewhere in this direction okay now now this armature mmf is trying to stop the rotor how the field mmf is, will always try to align in the direction of resultant so you have a kind of uh, produced a pulling force in the clockwise direction on this field mmf okay uh, so because a resultant in the is in the back back side okay so it will try to go in the direction of resultant if you are not comfortable with the vectors i'll uh, explain it in some other way see if the dot is here cross is here my n will be produced here and s will be produced here in the stator because my field lines are in this direction the direction of mmf is this and field lines go from n to s see my stator is a magnet of this kind while my rotor is a magnet of this kind in my stator i have uh, you can assume it a banded magnet okay so if the field lines are going in this direction then because these are um, inside the stator part okay these are inside this circle so n will be produced here s will be produced here while in the rotor uh, the n will be produced here s will, pro will be produced here because field lines are outside this magnet okay so if n has been produced here and s has been produced here this s will try to attract this n this n will try to attract this s so these n s will produced a separate torque on this rotor in the clockwise direction if uh, n will be attracted to this s it will try to rotate in the clockwise direction so a separate torque has been generated on this rotor okay this is called electromagnetic torque so due to the action of uh, this emf induced by the rotor a reaction has been produced on this rotor due to the lenz's law so this uh, mmf is also called armature reaction mmf because it is producing a reaction which is trying to stop the rotor okay now i have two torques running on this rotor one is the clockwise direction torque which i am producing by the mechanical means by my turbine by flowing the steam on the turbine the second torque is electromagnetic torque that is produced in the clockwise direction due to the lenz's law okay so all i want if i want my rotor to rotate at a constant speed then i want these torques to be balanced okay if my these two torques are balanced my rotor will be rotating at a constant speed because there will be neither acceleration nor the deceleration okay now if somehow i increase this anti clockwise direction torque that is mechanical torque my rotor will be accelerating in this direction until unless Uh, the speed will start increasing if it is running at 3000 will be 3010 3020 30 40 it will keep on increasing until unless i increase the torque in the clockwise direction also and balance this torque out 
okay so when it, these will be get balanced the speed will again come to the constant value so for the easiness i am assuming that i have connected a resistive load to the armature that is my direction of emf and uh, induced emf and direction of uh, armature current is same okay and these are lagging by the field mmf to the 90 degree that is if you see the vector representation if this is the direction of my field mmf this is the direction of my armature mmf the same is the direction of my uh, the, the, the armature e induced emf and armature current okay this is my resultant my rotor is rotating in the anti clockwise direction okay so now we will try to understand the generation of active power how the active power is generated so assume initially my rotor was rotating at uh, by supplying 100 megawatt load now the demand increased to 150 megawatt so i have to increase the load so as this 150 megawatt i, I increase the load what happens the load is connected to this armature so the current in the armature windings is increased if I increase the load, that means I increase the current because the uh, output voltage is constant. Okay. So, if I increase the armature current, what happens? If you have seen the rotating magnetic field video, you must be aware of that these three windings at 120 degree apart create a magical rotating magnetic field. And these produce a resultant MMF which rotates in the air gap. Now that resultant MMF that has been shown by the NS, this NS, this resultant MMF is proportional to the current. So this is the relation of resultant MMF, the resultant MMF produced by the three phase windings is M2 root 2 upon pi kW and pH i upon P and these are the number of phases. So this depends on the current. If I increase the armature current, the resultant MMF increases. That means now my stator magnets that NS in the S becomes more stronger bigger magnets now I have now this bigger magnets will attract the rotor more in the clockwise direction that is my electromagnetic torque in the clockwise direction has been increased this S will be attracting this N more this N will be attracting this S more so that uh, in the clockwise direction torque has been increased while the uh, I have not uh, yet changed the governor so my anti-clockwise direction torque has remained same so what will happen the rotor will start decelerating because it was by default was rotating in the anti-clockwise direction now in the clockwise direction you have increased the torque the torque balance has been devastated so now from the 3000 will start stopping to 2990 2970 it is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction but it is decelerating okay so now what i have to do I have to increase the clockwise the anti clockwise direction torque what i will do i will increase my governors more more steam will be fed to the turbine turbine will generate more torque in the anti clockwise direction so after some deceleration in the anti clockwise direction it will start in accelerating as you will increase the governor increase the mechanical torque it will start accelerating again and after some time it will balance at some new position and again it will come to the 3000 rpm now there is one more method by which you can understand this thing remember one thing in an synchronous generator my rotor field always leads the stator field while in the synchronous motor my stator field leads the rotor field so suppose this is my rotor axis this is my stator axis and the angle between these two is called the delta okay so i am creating mechanical power in this direction and at anti in the anti clockwise direction by the turbine and in the clockwise direction the electromagnetic torque is being produced so suppose i have this is my rotor axis okay and this is my stator axis this is the angle delta so what was happening initially the rotor was rotating in the anti clockwise direction at some delta angle like 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 this okay now what i have done i have increased the stator load as I increase the stator load, I have made this magnet more stronger. So as it will become more stronger, initially there was no relative motion between these two, both were running at the 3000 RPM. Now this as this magnet has become more stronger, this rotor will get attracted to it more. Okay. So what will happen? This is running at 3000 RPM, but this rotor will start decelerating. Okay. So it will come closer, closer, closer. My delta angle will reduce, 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 reduce. So both are going in the anti-clockwise direction, but this is the ang uh, the delta angle is being reduced by the because the rotor is getting closer to the stator. Now, at some point, 
as I increase the mechanical torque in the anti-clockwise direction it will again start accelerating 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 okay now I have to put it on the 3000 rpm again so at some point when uh, the mechanical torque will be equal to electrical torque okay it will stop accelerating okay so at uh, that point uh, we'll be getting the balanced position but the delta will increase from the delta which was initially because at higher load the delta will increase because the balanced position will be getting at higher delta now we can understand this thing by the swing equation also we are familiar that swing equation is x upon pi f d square delta upon dt square pm minus p this is mechanical power this is electrical power okay so when these two powers are balanced the acceleration or deceleration in the delta will be zero but as in this case i have increased the electrical load pm minus p will become negative that is my delta will st start decreasing decelerating as we have seen in the last case my delta was decreasing okay suddenly at some decreased delta i increase the pm and the decelerate first the deceleration become less 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 and at some point when pm becomes equal to p the deceleration becomes zero okay but at this zero deceleration the speed is still less than 3000 rpm so i have increased i have to increase the pm more than pe then my pm starts increasing uh, the, uh, gets um, higher than pe then my delta start increasing 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 and uh, finally after some swings uh, it gets to a new balanced position of uh, load okay if i want to tell you by this <coughs> p delta curve suppose this was my p delta curve okay the lower one initially i was running that at this pe not electrical power load and delta at this was delta naught now as i have increased the electrical load first it, it will decelerate okay because pm has become less than pe so delta will reduce 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 but after some time suppose at some point i start increasing the governor uh, walls opening the governor walls more the electrical uh, mechanical uh, torque will increase so after some point uh, so at this point this uh, deceleration becomes zero and it starts increasing uh, as pm gets uh, higher to p it starts accelerating 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 and after some point swings it gets to a new balanced position where the pm uh, becomes equal to p but this balanced position will be getting at some higher delta that is delta naught plus delta delta the new power has now become p naught plus delta pe so this was the generation of active power you must have heard that uh, the output frequency is controlled by the active power or the turbine so as the speed is reducing i am putting more torque as uh, the speed reduces the frequency also reduces that you must have seen in the synchronous speed lecture as the speed reduces my frequency reduces but i'm again uh, putting my frequency to that uh, constant value maybe 50 hertz or 60 hertz for the 3000 rpm case 50 hertz i am uh, putting more steam on the turbine and putting more torque in the anti clockwise direction so i am controlling the output frequency by the turbine now we'll discuss about the reactive power okay and how the output voltage is controlled by the reactive power so the reactive power is supplied by, by my field windings okay so these field windings are nothing but an inductor coil so ultimately i am supplying power by the field coils so it is called reactive power because the uh, energy is stored in the magnetic field okay and if i am supplying this energy this is the reactive power okay so what is exactly i am doing this current supplied in the field winding is called field current okay so as i increase the excitation now uh, increasing excitation means increasing the field winding current as i increase the field winding current what will happen my f magnetic flux will increase as i increase the current in these windings the d um, magnetic flux which was being produced by this current will increase the magnitude of that phi will increase okay so if the magnitude of that phi has been increased and i am rotating this rotor at that same speed that is 3000 rpm that then in per unit time more flux will be cutting these windings okay because the phi has been increased and the speed has been uh, remained constant 
So in the per unit time, the more flux will be cutting them. So more EMF will be induced in these windings. That is more current will be flowing in these windings. And by increasing the current, I am supplying that reactive power through the armature windings. See how this uh, uh, keeps my output voltage constant. You must have heard that uh, output voltage is kept constant by the reactive power support. So as my voltage dips in the armature winding, what I do, I increase the excitation. Okay, I increase. See, I cannot uh, make this uh, voltage. Uh, I cannot increase the voltage by the turbine rotation. If I in, uh, rotate the turbine at higher speeds, that that doesn't mean I am increasing more uh, more EMF in it. Because I have to keep the rotor at three thousand RPM. I cannot rotate it at higher speed. I can induce more EMF if I rotate it at higher speeds, but I cannot do that. I have to keep it at constant speed. So if the uh, EMF in these wind because if I will be rotating it at higher speeds the DT will because in lesser time the rotation time will be reduced so if rotation time will be reduced the EMF will be increased but that cannot happen because I have to rotate it at 3000 RPM so if the grid voltage or the output voltage of this armature reduces what I do I put more flux in it and the rotation speed is same and if more flux has been put then more EMF will be generated in it so as the EMF reduces what I do I put more excitation current I increases the field winding current and more EMF will be induced in this winding thus I am providing reactive power support and put, uh, keeping my output voltage constant but as I increase the excitation these NS and S become more stronger and when these NS become more stronger the attraction force will become stronger uh, between the stator MMF and rotor MMF. If this is my stator MMF, rotor MMF, again the attraction force, if I make this magnet stronger, the attraction force increases. So the delta will again decrease. So as I increase the excitation, my delta reduces. So if you are mathematics lover, we know that Q equals V upon X cos delta minus V square upon X. As you are reducing delta, the cos delta will increase and your reactive power support will increase. So if you want to understand by uh, this uh, P delta curve, we saw that EQ was EY, EV upon X uh, cos delta minus something. So uh, this is my P maximum, uh, sorry, Q maximum, maximum power. So as the reactive power is increased, my maximum power will be increased because the E was increasing, EMF induced was increasing. So if maximum power has been increased, this is my new maximum power. So I will be shifting my curve upside. So if this curve has been shifted upside, okay, I will be getting this PE naught plus delta PE that is my increased power in that case was 150 megawatt at some reduced delta. Now the delta at this power will be less reduced. Initially in the I was getting it at this delta. Now if I have increased the reactive power support excitation, I will be getting it at lesser delta. So by increasing the excitation, I am reducing the delta. So there may be case when my uh, I am uh, connecting inductive load. So at, in that position, my uh, armature current will be lagging to the EMF. So that thing is not uh, very typical in that case also. The angle between my resultant MMF and the armature MMF will get increased by some angle psi. Will not be going into the much detail of it. But in the last case, when the, I was connected resistive load, this was the direction of my armature current but in this case this will be the direction of armature current because it is lagging by angle psi so the resultant the angle between the resultant mmf and this armature current has been increased that is armature the angle between armature mmf and the resultant mmf has been increased so friends, this was video about the alternator here. We understood how the active power was generated, reactive power generated, how the speed remained constant throughout the scenario. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up, share and please, please, please subscribe the channel to keep on supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.